Krishna. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadari Yashoda Nandana Pacha Janna Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Pacha Janna Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari All glories of the assembled devotees, all glories of the assembled devotees, all glories of the assembled devotees, all glories of Shri Guru and Shri Guranga. Give me that book, please. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya okay. Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th Canto, The Science of God Chapter 1 Is the title what? Supreme Lord is equal to everyone The Supreme Lord is equal to everyone Text 11 Kalam Charantam Shijatisha Ashayam Pradana Pumbyam Naradeva Satyakrit Kalam Charantam Shijatisha Ashayam Pradana pum byam nara deva satyakrit Kalam charantam shijatisha ashayam Pradana pum byam nara deva satyakrit Kalam charantam shijatisha ashayam Pradana pum byam nara deva satyakrit
Column, time, Chirantam, moving. Shijati creates Yishaha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ashrayam, shelter. Pradana, for the material energy. Pium, Byam, and the living entity. Naradeva, O ruler of men. Satya, true. Krit, creator. Translation. Commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. O great king, the supreme personality of Godhead, the controller of the material and spiritual energies, who is certainly the creator of the entire cosmos, creates a time factor to allow the material energy and the living entity to act within the limits of time. Thus the Supreme Personality of Godhead is never under the time factor nor under the material energy. Purport. One should not think that the Lord is dependent on the time factor. He actually creates the situation by which material nature acts and by which the conditioned soul is placed under material nature. Both the conditioned soul and the material nature act within the time factor, but the Lord is not subject to the actions and reactions of time, for time has been created by Him. To be more clear, Srila Vishwanatha Chakravati Thakur says that creation, maintenance, and annihilation are all under the supreme will of the Lord. In Bhagavad Gita 4.7, the Lord says, Yada yada hidharmasya glanir bhavitibharita abhutdhanam dharmasya tadatmanam shujamayaham. Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice, O descendant of Bar, and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself. Since Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the controller of everything, when he appears, he is not within the limitations of material time. Janma karma chame divyam. In this verse, the words kalam charantam shijatisha ashrayam indicate that although he Although the Lord acts within time, where the Sattva Gun, Raja Gun, or Tamagun is prominent, one should not think that the Lord is under time's control. Time is within His control, for He creates time to act in a certain way. He is not under the control of time. The creation of the material world is one of the Lord's pastimes. Everything is fully under His control. Since creation takes place when Rajagun is prominent, the Lord creates the necessary time to give facilities for Rajagun. Similarly, He also creates the necessary times for maintenance and annihilation. Thus, this verse establishes that the Lord is not under the limitations of time. As stated in the Brahma Samhita, Ishvara Parama Krishna, Krishna is the supreme controller, controller Shatchirananda Vigraha. He possesses a blissful spiritual body. Anadi. He is not subordinate to anything. As the Lord confirms in Bhagavad Gita 7 7, Matta Paratanam Nanyat Kinchanasti Dananjaya. O conqueror of wealth, Arjuna, there is no truth superior to me. Nothing can be above Krishna, for he is the controller and creator of everything. The Mayavadi philosophers say that this material world is mitya, false. And one should therefore not bother about this mitya creation, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mitya. But this is not correct. 
Here it is said, said to create, whatever is created by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Satyam Param, cannot be called Mitya. The cause of the creation is Satya, true. So how can the effect of the cause be Mitya? The very word Satya Krit is used to establish that everything created by the Lord is factual, never false. The creation may be temporary, but it is not false. Omikaritamadandasya kananjana shalakaya chakshulan meditamena tasmai shi gudavena maham kum gudavena chalam pangam langay tegadim yakipata maham vande shi gudundiditanam bancha kopadubisha kripa sindu bevacha patitanam pavane bil vaishnavabil namonamah jaya shi kishna chaitanya prabunitananda shi advaita gudadhar shivasadi go urbakta vinda hare kishna hare kishna 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 hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, translation again. O oh, great King, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the controller of the material and spiritual energies, who is certainly the creator of the entire cosmos, creates a time factor to allow the material energy and the living entity to act within the limits of time. Thus, the Supreme Personality is never under the time factor, nor under the material energy. So, when Srila Prabhupada brought his disciples back from, Mer uh, I mean, back, I mean, when he brought his disciples to India to establish the Hare Krishna movement in India, he he wanted to take, like, I think it was the second best person from the from each temple, Prabhupada brought about 30 devotees over to India. And eventually they they helped to establish the Hare Krishna movement by building and securing three properties, one in Mayapur, one in Bombay, and one in Vrindavan. And then they went to Kolkata and, and so many other places also doing so many programs traveling. Uh, so once when Srila Prabhupada was in Bombay and uh, he was asked to go to a very wealthy person's home uh, one of the hey, how do you say the name? Birla? Huh? Birla. Yeah, Birla one of the Birla's homes one of the wealthiest families of India at the time I think they're still kind of Wealthy, maybe not. Anyway, so, uh, and, and Srila Prabhupada asked Mrs. Birla what did she want him to speak about. And there, he, he gave a whole list of different topics. There was a whole list of topics. So one of those topics was, um, that she picked actually, was how to have a successful life. So, for whatever reason, she thought that she didn't have a successful life, apparently. Because, or else why would she want him to speak on that? <laughs> um, so anyways, that could be seen in different ways. But that's what uh, she chose. So Srila Prabhupada spoke on a verse from the Bhagavad Gita. And he spoke on uh, verse, this verse... Um, Verse, what is it? How does it go? Daivi Mahatmanas to Mamparta Daivi Prakriti Mashrita. Yeah. So he spoke on that particular verse of the Bhagavad Gita. And. Um, And he went to explain, which this particular verse is explaining how how the Mahatmas, the great souls, they're under the protection of the divine energy, Daivi Prakriti, not the material energy. 
Uh, and you could say, well, what about the people who are sometimes under the spiritual and sometimes under the material? <laughs> right? You could say, oh, there's people under the spiritual energy and there's people under the material energy. But what about people who are sometimes under the spiritual, sometimes material, right? Sometimes devotees feel like that. Sometimes I feel like I'm in the spiritual energy and sometimes I feel like I'm in the material energy. But anyways, he said that the Mahatma is under the divine energy, Daivi Prakriti, um, which he explained to be uh, personified, the Daivi Prakriti is personified as Srimati Radharani. Uh, means under the protection of Radharani. And he said the material energy, the personification of the material energy is Durga Devi. Anyone remember that verse from the Brahma Samhita about Dorga Dham? Hari Dham? Devi Mahesha Hari Dham Usuteshu Teshu? Yeah. So, so Devi Dham, or is there another verse about? Sati pralaya sad and shakti eka chaye via sibuvanani bibarti dorga it chana rupam via shichachesha shetsa govandamari. So this Devi Dham, it, it's, it's the material world. And Dorga specifically means difficult, right? It's like a, like a fort, difficult to get out. Um, so so he was explaining how the personification material is Dorga, difficult, and and she carries the this uh, this trident with the three uh, prongs, right? Of which represent the threefold miseries of material existence. So misery is caused from the body and mind. Misery is caused from other living entities. Misery is caused from natural disasters. Right. <laughs> so these threefold miseries are there, and she's constantly jabbing the living entities. And the purpose is to wake them up and to and to help them become more suitable or more interested in serving Krishna. So you can say it's like tough love. But Srila Prabhupada was saying that the success is not to be under Dorga. Dorga's uh, watchful eye and punishment, but the success of life is to be under the protection of Srimati Radharani, the watchful eye, the protection, not punishment, the protection of Radharani. That's the success. And and what does it mean to be under the divine protection of Radharani? It means to be engaged in devotional service. Satatam kirtiyanto mam, to be always chanting and hearing about Krishna. Or if we get tired of hearing and chanting about Krishna, we could sweep for Krishna or shop for Krishna. Like Srila Prabhupada says, sometimes a devotee, he will, he will read something about Krishna or he will distribute books about Krishna, or he will go to the grocery store and do some shopping for Krishna, or he will clean for Krishna, or, or he will worship Krishna in the form of the deity, um, or he will write for Krishna, or he will speak for Krishna. So he said there's different things we could do. And he said in this way he stays engaged. Uh, because as they, as it's commonly said, and as Prabhupada would quote, he would quote these things sometimes, but he says, uh, um, idle mind is a devil's workshop. What does that mean? Idle mind is a devil workshop. It means a mind that is not engaged positively, it will naturally be engaged neg negatively. And not, will, not only will it be engaged negatively, it will be a workshop. It will be a factory, a devil's factory. It will produce so many troublesome ideas that will drag the living entity down. 
Uh, so therefore, there's a great stress in engaging the mind, not just the body, <laughs> but engaging the mind in Krishna's uh, service. Means planning, thinking. Like for example, those who are those who are organizing festivals for Krishna, they could say, "Okay, what are we going to cook this time?" And they should use their intelligence to how to come up with all types of way to gratify the devotee senses. I mean, to cook nice prasadam. I'm just joking. They should come up with all types of nice ways to, to, to think about how to please Krishna through that cooking, through that, through, please the devotees. And in this way, their mind will be engaged. Looking up recipes, finding out what other temples do, what other temples are cooking, um, or festival decorators. They could uh, figure out how to decorate the temple in so many nice ways. You know, look at other temples and pictures and the deity worshipers and, and the book distributors. They could rack their brains how to distribute more and more books. One of the best ways to distribute more books is to get others to distribute books. To train others. So if, a, if somebody knows how to do it, distribute, and then they could tr encourage others and train others. Or they could get people to sponsor books. That's a great way too, because some people, you, you may try to train them and they say, no, I don't want to be trained. <laughs> or they may say, I'm too busy you know, to be trained. I'm working nine to five, I can't be trained. On the weekends, I'm care taking care of family business. So, But I could give some money for books. And that's what a lot of these temples do, like Los Angeles and ISV, for example. And therefore they have such... Anyways, they have like a principle, right? They say, let it, let it fly, let the books fly, means a lot of these are taken care of, so just let them go. Now, whatever, whether that's something we want to get into is another thing, but... Um, but anyways, to engage people, that's, that's a good way to double it, triple it. Because after all, we only have two arms <laughs> and, and so much time in a day. So you could be sitting at Balboa Park with your two arms, passing out books with your one mouth, talking with people, you know, collecting, right? And something could be done. It's good. I mean, wonderful. Beyond wonderful. <laughs> Transcendentally wonderful. Um, now, to increase that, you could try to find somebody, encourage somebody, get someone to join the temple or get somebody in the temple or get somebody outside of the temple, Nelson or whoever, and train them, get them encouraged, get them inspired and train them. And then there could be another person sitting somewhere else with their two arms. And you know, in this way, it's expanding. This is what Prabhupada did, actually. So in this way, if we use our minds to think about how to better our service and think about Krishna, then the mind won't be a devil's workshop. The mind will be engaged. Um, so, it's, so yeah, it's, it's uh, very important. So to engage the body, mind, words, everything in Krishna's service. Um, in this way, we will be under the protection of the spiritual energy. But without that protection, it's just kind of, we become easy prey. Become like a, <laughs> it's like a, like a red, red mark right on our, right on our forehead, you know. And we become easy prey for Maya, just. Um, I mean, actually, it's 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 just by the mercy of, of of the devotees and Krishna that we at all we're able to engage in devotional service at all. Because factually, we're always easy prey for Maya, and we should always think we are. Um, but if we properly utilize our senses, then then we'll be protected, and it's very important. Um, so here in this 
particular verse and purport, it's mentioning you know, these different energies, material, spiritual energies. And as I was quoting Prabhupada, the, the goal is to become under the control of the spiritual energy, personified as Srimati Radharani. Um, so, but in terms of Krishna, he never falls under the control of the material energy. He's never under the control. And that's one of the fallacies, one of the many fallacies bes behind the Mayavad philosophy or the personal philosophy is that they say that we are all once God and now we forgot that we, got, that we are God and now we're in Maya. But the fallacy is that God never falls in Maya. So if I'm God, how am I in Maya? means I'm not God. <laughs> so um, so that's important also. So if you ever meet anybody who thinks they're God, you could tell them that. You said, you, you look like you're in Maya. You seem like you're in Maya, and God never falls in Maya. So can you please explain this? Um, so yeah, Krishna never falls in illusion and never suffers also. Um, so if somebody says to you that I'm God, you could say, well, it looks like you're suffering a lot, or do you ever suffer? And if they say yes, you say, well, God never suffers, so how is it that you're God? So anyways, there's so many different ways how, to, um, how it doesn't add up. So... It says, Prabhupada says, that both the conditioned soul and the material nature act within the time factor, but the Lord is not subjected to the actions reactions of time, for time has been created by Him. To be more clear, Sri the Vishnu Chakravati Thakur says that creation, maintenance, and annihilation are all under the supreme will of the Lord. So, Krishna appears, it's not... He doesn't appear like the ordinary conditioned souls appear under the by force. They're forced to appear by their karma. They get a particular body, particular mind. Mind means certain inclinations. And so, but they, but Krishna appears by his own sweet will, transcendental. Um, he's not within the limitations of material time. He's not controlled by time like we are. Um, so time is under his control because it's, it's his creation. Uh, so in relation to us, time is not under our control. We, we are not under control of time. Time and tide wait for no man. Or time and tide wait for no woman or whatever time and tide do not wait for anyone in the oceans the waves are coming in it's not it's not waiting for anybody it's not waiting for the surfers to come or whatever it's it's just coming time is you know it's it, now it's 818 any minute it's going to be 819 and it's not going to wait for us um so no, neither is time under our control, neither is practically nothing's under our control. Um, so, and it's a very, you could say, important lesson to learn that we are not the supreme controllers. You could say, okay, well, I, I realize that I'm not the supreme controller, right? I'm not God, I'm not the supreme controller. Uh, but also we can't we, we can't identify as as little controllers either. Because after all, I mean, what really can we control? It's just a hallucination. So we're actually in the position of being controlled. We're either controlled by the material energy or controlled by the spiritual energy. So we 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 are we are either a dancing puppet in the hands of Krishna or a dancing puppet in the hands of Maya. Those are the two options. And you could say, what about, sometimes I want to be a dancing puppet of Maya, sometimes I want to be a dancing puppet of Krishna. Okay. Um, but we should, 
we should want to be, uh, we should want to, you could say, be under the control of, of Krishna, because this is actually our, our particular, this will be our, um, to our benefit. And you think, oh, control, I want to be free. But this particular, being controlled by Krishna is the freedom. We are free by being controlled by Krishna. Whereas we are slaves being controlled by Maya. That's the, that's the thing. We think, that we, we think that we're free dancing under the influence of the material energy, but we're just slaves. Whereas the proper conception is we should feel ourselves free dancing under the energy of the, uh, dancing under the spiritual energy, under the control of the spiritual energy. So that is something that we need to that we need to become fully convinced of. That I don't want to be under the control of the material energy. I don't want to to um, fulfill my unlimited material desires. I don't want to dedicate my life to useless things. But I want to surrender to Krishna. I want to be under Krishna's control. I want to I want to fulfill the desires of the previous acharyas. I want to please my spiritual master. I want to please Krishna. That's that's a, something we need to become fully convinced of. And that will be our, again, that will be our benefit. That's in our real self-interest. That will be our ecstasy, actually. Um, and we want to become, you could say, we want to become as fixed up as possible, as soon as possible, because... There's a great danger by not being fixed up in devotional service. There's a great danger. One could be swept away. Like what does Krishna say? Just like a it's like a boat. What does he say in the Bhagavad Gita? Anybody remember? Like a wind's carried by the boat. Any any one of the roaming senses focus on the sense object and carry away the mind. So, Yeah. So his bow is carried by wind, by the wind. So, um, so, so we can become carried away, and and many times we do become carried away, <laughs> but then we just come back. But there, but but there's a, but there there is a possibility of becoming carried away, and not coming back. And that's the thing. Sometimes we think we're above that. We we. We think that we cannot become carried away and not come back. There's been many of the good devotees who've been carried away and not come back, and they're still not back. Um, many devotees who are just who were first initiated, second initiated, you know, doing so much service, even if you want to, whatever sannyasis and gurus and so on, and they got carried away. They and and they just didn't come back. So, um, of course, sometimes they get carried away for 20 years and then they come back, but we don't want to do that. It's, it's considered a waste of time. So, so, the, so, the, so the idea is that if we, if we, if we should be, want to become fixed up as soon as possible, in other words, strong, and not that we just become strong uh, overnight, but gradually become strong, and we have to maintain that strength. It's not just something. Oh, okay, well, I, I did a bunch of push-ups, and I, you know, I, I, I worked my biceps. But wh what do those people keep on doing? They keep on going back to the gym, right? They, they don't. <laughs> they don't stop going to the gym. They keep on going back. Why? Because the weak, the muscles become weak, right? Uh, so so we have to become strong and then and then maintain that strength it's not that oh i became initiated and now i'm now i'm strong no we have to maintain that strength 
uh, throughout our life. Not so easy, right? Dorga, difficult. Um, so, but if we if we're able to do that, if we're able to become strong by good association, by engaging in the processes of devotional service, by praying ardently to Sri Sri Radhagiridhari, by being sincere, if we become strong, then and if we maintain our strength, and if we avoid the all devouring uh, destroyer of bhakti, right? What's that? Vaishnava Aparad. It's interesting because it's it's one of the easiest Aparads to do <laughs> in Kali Yuga. Just really go for the devotees, you know. Whether it's in our mind, whether it's directly with our voice. Generally it doesn't become physical, but sometimes. But whether it's with our mind, whether it's with our voice, whether it's talking about them, while they're not around, whatever it is, it's so easy in Kali Yuga just to, just to really go for the devotees means offend them. But if we're able to protect, if we're able to not do that, and if we're able to engage sincerely in the process of devotional service, then yes, we will gradually become strong, and we will become, and we, we can maintain our strength, and we be, we could be fully successful, right? Param Vijayate. Shri Krishna Sankirtan, Sankirtan. Um, we, we can become uh, fully successful. Um, because after all, we're trying to offer our, 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 we're trying to make an offering to Krishna. And at present, like there's a verse from the Bhagavatam. What's that verse? I know Javita Prabhu knows that one. It's talk Narda Moon. I think it's a verse explaining how if somebody falls down, um, while not being while being in an immature state, yes, yeah, a pakvo, yeah. It says if they fall down, being in an immature state of bhakti, and this particular word, as far as I understand, it means uncooked. It means not mature, not well done, right? Uncooked potato. If they're if they fall down, be in an, un, an immature state, it says okay, they don't lose anything, right? They they continue on whether it's this life or next life, they continue on. Uh, but those who just engage in material activities, what's the use? They just what do they really gain? They don't gain anything, right? Just cycle, cycle, cycle. Um, but th about this point of being uncooked, it's we're trying to make an offering, right? We're trying to make an, an offering to Krishna, offer our consciousness, right? Or offer our devotion to Krishna, and we want it to be fully cooked. We want it to be fully, you know, nicely cooked. In other words, we want our consciousness to be pure. So we can have a nice offering to Krishna of our consciousness, Krishna consciousness, right? Um, but if it's if it's uncooked or immature, it's it's not such a great offering, right? Just like what do you call it? like, you know, when you first start cooking the last offering or something, and you're kind of struggling, and you, you kind of what what do you call it? uncooked potatoes, hard potatoes or something? That's a that's a common mistake cooks make, right? The potatoes aren't cooked, or or. Um, Eggplant, that's a really bad one, right? Everybody lo everybody hates, I mean, dislikes uncooked eggplant, right? It's like really unpleasant. Or, I mean, just practically anything. Cake, like half-baked cake. It's just so many things are just not so. Um, so we want to fully cook or we want to be fully mature and then so we have a nice offering. Now, someone would say, okay, well, that sounds kind of discouraging because my devotion is not cook, so what, what do I do? I'm just offering Krishna a bad offering. Well, another example is given of a mango. So you have a ripe mango and an unripe mango. Now, an unripe mango, there still could be things done with it, right? You could cut it and make chutney, right? Or you could make mango pickle, you know, there's different things you could do with unripe mango. Um... 
but uh, but of course the best is when it's mature. So that's what we want to go for. We want to go for, uh, you could say, maturing our bhakti. And then, and this is relating to how the time factor, how we use our time. So we're not under control of time. And in other words, time and time wait for no one. So so the idea is that whatever time we do have, we want to utilize it in the best possible way to mature our bhakti. And therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, Iskhan sandwich, or somebody said Iskhan sandwich. I'm not sure where that came from. We'll have to look into that. <clears throat> so you have the sourdough bread, right? The, and then you have the paneer, or if you're not into that, tofu. No, not tofu. Paneer. And then you have whatever, some other top, and then you have another another piece of bread. And, okay, you have the morning program. You have the evening program. There's Krishna Kata. There's Hari, there's Hari Kata going on. Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. There is, uh, throughout the day, there's the uh, services, sadhanas, services, reading, at least an hour a day, much as possible. There's no lack of books, that's for sure. Um, to have some mission, okay, this is 2023. What books am I going to read this year? What am I going to complete to write it down, to, to make progress, to, to, to think about what books I'm going to complete and, and to complete them, to have some goals? Or else everything becomes very dry and boring and what am I doing here? The glaring material energy looks way better than this. All right, let's let's give it another try. So, but but if we follow the ISKCON sandwich, then it's very simple. There's morning program, evening program, uh, some service, some sadhana through the day, some reading. Don't have to do anything dramatic. Don't have to do anything radical. Simple program. And uh, and we will be nourished by that iskon sandwich, <laughs> or else we become we become what he called malnourished. Just like one devotee, he gave a, he gave an example, which I'll end with this. But he gave an example, um, like a like a, a woman who's pregnant, you know, has embryo in the and her whatever womb and or even a child growing up they have to especially children they have to eat certain things which is difficult for the parents but they have to eat certain things to become nourished to become healthy or else i mean they while whether in the womb or outside of the womb children could could just become like a real malnourished, uh, unhealthy, stunted uh, human being. So he said similarly that devotees, they have to engage in Hare Krishna chanting and, and all of these different devotional, or else they become like that, very malnourished, unhealthy. So, uh, so on a positive note, so we could do that. It's it's simple. It's not difficult. It's very easy. It's simple. It's straightforward. It's not complicated. Anyone could do it. Nityananda Prabhu will empower anybody to do it. So, does anybody have any uh, question? All right, Mr. Soul. Thank you for the nice class. I just had a question. At one point you mentioned that, what's it called? That Krishna is not affected by the material energies. I wanted to know how it relates to his like pure devotees. I was wondering if we could talk about like how Prabhupada wasn't like really affected by the material energy and whatnot. Okay. Well, what do you think? Yeah. 
You don't have any thoughts about it? Well, I mean, it's it like, it's, it's not that one becomes a pure devotee and then their body doesn't age. The body does age. But um, the aging of the body of a, of a devotee, especially old age and disease and so on, that is just them coming closer to eternal life. Whereas the d disease and old age of a materialist, that's just them coming closer to another cycle of birth and death and suffering. So, so the so the devotees are are not not influenced by the material energy in the sense that the the there's the time affects them. Um, so they're not free in that way. But um, like Kapila Dev says that the threefold sufferings they affect them less, or they're not so disturbed. Or the famous example that's probably said too much. It's, someone's probably saying it right now in some of the Srimad Bhagavatam class around the world, but they have like a lotus on, on, on top of the water, right? Okay, the, the water splashes a lotus, but it just pearls up, and, you know, or the lotus leaf, it just pearls up. And, so they're not really affected. They're, they're above the, the sufferings of the material world, practically speaking. Um, but also not being under the control of material energy means they've conquered their senses and mind. Uh, so, so it's not that they are, what do you call it, hankering for Maya's association. Right? We should hanker for Krishna's association, not Maya's association. It's like really hankering for Maya's association. No, we should hanker for Krishna's association, but the, but the pure devotees are the devotees who are not under material energy they're not, it's not that, they're, they're, they're beyond that, they're above that, their mind and senses are controlled. Um, so that's another aspect of not being, does, I don't know if anybody else has any other thing in relation to that. I have a question, but I can wait for you to, to uh, end. Yeah, one there's one a few more questions. Please. Yeah, I mean. Comments. I mean, you answered it pretty well. It's a, the the thing is, is that it's it's the, it always comes down to the consciousness. The consciousness of the pure devotee, pure pure devotee, even when there's there's cause for freaking out, the pain, you know, even physical pain would be there. But as you pointed out, and you mentioned Kapila Dave, they're conquering the mind. They're able to absorb the mind in Krishna. And in that way, transcend the pain. In other words, they know it's there, but it, it doesn't affect them as much as as ordinary people. Yeah. And so it's not. It's so of course, the, I mean, Bashir Prabhupada's body, you know, as he said, is it also eventually, you know, became diseased and was unworkable anymore. But his consciousness stayed pure and and fixed on Krishna. Yes. And that's that. That's the the, the whole difference. The materialist. It's completely uh, the mind, the intelligence, everything gets wrapped up in, in what's happening in the immediate you know, environment. And that's yeah. the lesson of the Bhagavad Gita. Arjun was affected by his bodily relationship with all of these people. And he was an example of, a, you know, at that point, an example of a materialist. And so the whole Bhagavad Gita was spoken so that he would become equipoised, that famous thing, more equipoised yeah. in habits and distress by being fixed at the lotus feet of Krishna. Yeah, like Prabhupada's last days give a yeah, very, very good, example. good testimony of... Yeah, the doctors were, were amazed because he, he, he just skin and bones and then the, the nerves would be... But they, and normally someone would be crying out in agony and he was just... Yeah. yeah, and Prabhupada's consciousness was so. I mean, clear. Uh, you know, it was it was it, people would come in and they would start crying because he would ask, "Have you had prasadam yet?" You know, he's lying there. You know, he was concerned about them, and they were they were just ama amazing. Uh, yeah, he was translating expression. Bhagavatam, and yeah. You know, so, yes, Dwight money. Thank you, Bob. Um, you were speaking about how sometimes we are not fully ready, uh, half cooked. <laughs> Potato. And I was thinking of asking this question. 
we see often that some devotees they don't have extraordinary talents and they're very simple minded and they're just doing some menial work, some simple services. They might make mistakes. Um, but if they are doing the ashram duty and if they're doing service for devotees and for the temple, they stay, Krishna keeps them in the company of devotees. Is there a possibility of them also not being thoroughly cooked and not and coming back here, even though they, they always endeavor and try their best? Is it possible for them to be successful? Yes, and, and be fully done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, I remember there was one devotee in, in, uh, in Houston. He was telling, he was telling one of his shiksha gurus that, I don't know how to do anything. He said, I don't know how to do puja. I don't know how to distribute books. I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to manage. I don't know how to do anything. Although he was up there doing puja. So. But, um, but then his guru said, well, you could could work on chanting Hare Krishna, right? <laughs> I mean, if you look at, like, Lord Chaitanya, like, what's his name? Uh, Kolavecha Sridhar. It's not that Kolavecha Sridhar was some world preacher or even village local preacher or big kirtan leader or pujari or whatever, on and on and on and on and on. He wasn't any of that. Actually, when, the, when Lord Chaitanya said, go get Kolavecha Sridhar, the devotees didn't even know who he was. Like they literally didn't know who he was, and then, and he said, and then Lord Chaitanya said, "Well, you go over to that place where where go over to this part of the town, and you'll hear him chanting loud, Hare Krishna, and then you should. This is Kolavich Shridhar. You should bring him. So, of course, he had pure devotion for Lord Chaitanya, and he was and he was chanting and in pure devotion, but." But we don't have to have any special qualities, necessarily. But but even if we don't don't have any whatever special character uh, abilities, we could do something for Krishna, and we should say, "I can't do anything, Krishna." Okay, well, can you weed for Krishna? I said, "Okay, I could do that." Or can you? I don't know. I mean, there's everybody could do something. So and we can be and the person can become successful. So you wanted some other Yeah. Um another question is um you were speaking about in Kali Yuga the main apparatus is the Vaishnava apparat. Easiest one, yeah. Easiest one, yeah. And what about different yugas? Going back to Satya Yuga for instance. Well there's more but prominence of the mode of Goodness. Less mode of passion More and piety. ignorance and less quarreling and hypocrisy and stuff like that. So there's less of you know th that offense going on. I mean, it still goes on, but less. Um, but yeah, that's a challenge because we're supposed to, you say, in a spiritual organization, we're supposed to accept authority, right? That's a problem because in Kali Yuga, people don't like accepting authority. And then another problem is that the people, the subordinates, if you want to say that word, don't like accepting authority. And then the authorities, their, their challenge is they have to be good authorities. <laughs> so it's like a whole thing going on. You know, so it's a, it's a Kali Yuga is a perfect, uh, it's a perfect storm, you know, perfect <laughs> for Vaishnava Parat. But there is hope we can again, become under the control of spiritual energy, we could just transcend that. Um, yeah, so that's a challenge. So in regards to uh, Satya Yoga, for instance, the Aparad would be not performing your, um, like your meditation properly. And yeah, well, like, mistakes. for example, like deity worship, the process was deity worship, so maybe they're, you know, more, more likely. Yeah. What are the different ages? There's meditation, deity worship, so on. So the different, you could say, there's maybe more chances of offenses for those because you're engaged more in that. Um, but, but I'm just saying that the it's age of kali, quarrel and hypocrisy. Quarrel means fighting. Fighting means you don't like somebody. They don't like you. You disagree. You fight about it. 
you make offenses, right? It's it's a very that's why Prabhupada stressed and okay, cooperate, cooperate, because cooperate, it's difficult. Especially when you're talking about a worldwide organization. It's not just a it's not it's not that we just have a village, San Diego village Hare Krishna movement. It's a worldwide organization. And there's the internet. And there's a type there's a keyboard, right, to type all types of things about people and this and that and it's a it's a real I mean it's amazing when, when I forgot what was that machine? It was some machine that I think you could send messages around the world. Tell it's just like really basic, like yeah. just super ba- so then they asked Prabhupada, Oh Prabhupada, should we get one of these machines? We could easily communicate with each other. And Prabhupada said, No. <laughs> and he said you and, and then he said, Because you would gossip. I mean unbelievable. That's a, tell, I mean, talk about a very, what do you call it, primitive form of gossip. You know? <laughs> yeah, prajalpa. So nowadays it's like whatever you got. It's a full, yes, Tyler. So, so we have to be careful and protect ourselves. And therefore, as Javita Prabhu says, the, the whole process is centered around chanting on the holy name. That's the, that's the main process. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Evakavalam. Because we get that strength and happiness to not be interested in that stuff. Yes. Last. I, my question was about the third and fourth line of the verse. <laughs> I Actually, I think I know the answer to this question, but I, you said something so interesting earlier. You said when Prabhupada took his uh, white elephants back to India, he took the second best from each temple. So I was wondering why he took the second best from each temple. Well, leave the first. Yeah, leave the first. So leave the most important person, but take the second most. Yeah. Wow. So second man in charge. First. <laughs> second man in charge. Oh, that's actually that's great. It's like you took all the vice presidents around the world. That's a really fortunate. And some position devotees for them. too. Yeah. Some some women also went. So you wanted his Koshalia. temples to remain strong and then go. Pavamana went. Yeah. There's a book coming out. What is it called? Uh, Dancing, White Dancing White Elephants. Two years traveling the Sri the Prabhupada, so it goes into all these details. It'll be very nice. I, I, I have to interject because otherwise I might forget. It'll just take 10 seconds. I invented a word during this class, and nice. you're welcome to use it. Nice. Tran- uh, uh, we know about transcend. What transcend? Transcend. 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 Wow. <laughs> nice. So. You have to chant send, Prabhu. <laughs> Got to chant send the modes, Prabhu. All right, I think Vijay has a comment. Please. Uh, Balaram Prabhu, I don't think I should offer my question because um, uh, it is related to the class given yesterday by Ashram Maharaj, and I don't think he's present. Oh, I'll give, I'll give you his contact, and then you could ask him. No, no, but it's, it is related to the reaction of Dravida Prabhu to what Ashram Maharaj said, related to falling from the spiritual world oh. or not. Yeah, well, if you want, I could give you his contact. And no, then you... I, wa- I want to know from Dravida Prabhu, Oh. Uh, what what is the final word? What is the final answer? Did we well, fall Javita from Prabhu the spiritual here. world or not? Because it seems to me that uh, uh, Hold on. Uh, okay. said uh, one thing, uh, and Dravida Prabhu said a different thing. All right, we're not going to we're not going to open it. I'm just going to give you something. Do you have access to the uh, Veda base? You can do it yes, on, online. You can look at it. So you, you look for this, this phrase. It's a letter from Srila Prabhupada. Everything is explained there. And it's, that letter, it's actually an essay written in, uh, that he included with a letter um, specifically on this question. Specifically on this question. And it, it just, you, you look for the, the, the phrase crow and tal. The tal is spelled T-A-L, okay? Yes. And, and you'll get to that letter and that, that letter and that little essay in the letter will, ex, will uh, explain Srila Prabhupada's view of the whole matter. And it's, uh, it's very conclusive, if you're open to it. Yes, Dravid uh, Prabhu, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Kranchad Shumad Bhagavatam Kijar.